So the current working diagnosis is that she was born with these vascular anomalies. She's had them her whole life, and they're just starting to, they're playing out over time. So here we can see uh, the dilated jugular vein on the one side. So we'll say obviously that it's dominant. The jugular vein on the left stops right there, and we'll show you that. It just doesn't go anywhere. There's been no surgery in this neck. That's just the way she looks. Now this is the arterial phase. And let's come over here to the, we'll bring the venous phase right up front. This is the venous phase. So this is a few seconds later, and you can see how this one jugular vein has, has a collateral that's coming out from behind the jaw uh, up in there. So it's actually like she's got two little jugular veins coming out. Uh, you can see how this comes down, swings around. Uh, around here, it's uh, 120 centimeters per second. The blood flows a little fast through here. Um, we, uh, she might end up getting a stent behind here. I've got some other still shots where there's some narrowing here. Uh, even the radiologist commented saying that there's a 70% narrowing right up and through here. Uh, and we did have her jut her jaw forward. And when, when she juts her jaw forward, here you can see this. It does open up that plexus of veins and gives a little, looks like it gives a little better flow. We tried to document that with ultrasound today, pulse wave Doppler. We had a hard time getting it documented nicely because head down, head up, uh, she def well, actually we'll show you the stylohyoid ligament that's in there that is seems to be the culprit. So there's something we can't see and there's something we can see. The stylohyoid ligament obviously is. Uh, you know, we'll do it this way. I've got some still. Uh, Another inside the cranial vault, she has a, a uh, ectopic arachnoid granulation along the transverse sinus, uh, making that hypoplastic or really not functioning. So the left side, she's got a dolicolectasia of the vertebral artery that may be an incidental find finding. But here for sure we see this. Uh, this is the right jugular, which is functioning as two jugulars for her. There's your 70% narrowing. At that angle, so there's something on the inside. Today we adjusted the atlas with the atlas atlas orthogonal instrument to move the atlas away from that jugular, and she got a sense of well-being. Uh, she felt her head straighter, and uh, that's what happens when you open some of this stuff up. So the idea does she get a stent in there? Do they re release it uh, by releasing the stylohyoid ligament? Here's the calcified stylohyoid ligament there. Um, let's see what else we got. There's the collaterals. Uh, you can even see the veins. Actually, I'm giving location, but um, you can see them pulsing as she is in, not in a good state. Um, and of course, what do we care about? We care about all the, and there's that narrowing in there. Uh, we care about the metabolites of the brain being able to flush out. And there's another shot. Uh, I did screenshot these and send them to a thoracic surgeon. He didn't like it in there either. Uh, Yep, jaw forward. All right, so we want a dental appliance to hold your, t your jaw forward two or three millimeters while you sleep. We definitely don't want your chin down while you sleep. And of course, uh, we also don't want you to snore anymore, so we, uh, we'll have to show the airway in a moment. Uh, yeah, there's another good shot of, of jaw forward, opening up the plexus, narrowing, or collaterals, let's call them collaterals. Uh, here we did, we did have you turn your head to the left, and see how far the skull rocks out. Not too much. When you turn your head to the right, the skull does seem to rock out pretty far. So uh, we've seen that with people that are vertically challenged, that are always having to look up, and sometimes they get a little looser in those ligaments in there, or the joint capsule, actually. Uh, left rotation, right rotation. Again, looking at that. Oh, there's the airway. So. Uh, we have it checked. We, we have you on inhalation and exhalation. This is as small as it gets. And uh, of course, a functional test would be ideal, a, a sleep study. But even then, even if you were negative on a sleep study, we'd want you to get a CPAP machine and run experiments to see how you feel because there's a difference between frank pathology 
and then optimized. Uh, we have found people who've been tested negative on a CPAP, I mean a sleep study, they get a CPAP machine and they wake up feeling more refreshed and because their airway is just not optimized. Uh, uh, we did find a little pocket of air uh, behind your trachea. That's for somebody else to figure out. Um, oh, you do have a deviated septum, so there are significant in there actually. Um, it didn't look good. Uh, I don't know if you, you want to get a surgery at this stage of your life, but 